Bucks are directing traffic. Now Brunson, driving, puts it up, 40 for Brunson. Joining an exclusive club. He's only the fourth Nick in franchise history to score 40 in back-to-back -back games, along with Bernard King, Patrick Ewing, and Carmelo Anthony. We had to uh, just find a way. You know, they came out, started playing well with a lot of energy, and um, we tried to match it, and that means they had a couple more plays at the end. Well, Jalen Brunson with another stellar performance in Sacramento last night. Brunson with 42 points in the 98-91 win. For more on Brunson and the Knicks, let's welcome CP, the franchise, back to the show. CP, good to see you, man. Joe, good to see you as always. All right, let's talk about Brunson here. He put the Knicks on his back again for the second game in a row. Pretty much the whole season he's been doing that. So finish this sentence for me. This is the best season by a Knicks player since... I would have to say since Carmelo Anthony in the 2012-2013 season when Carmelo Anthony finished third in the NBA's uh, MVP voting, the Knicks that year finished with 50-plus wins and, and ultimately lost in the playoffs uh, to the Indiana Pacers. Jalen Brunson is right there, if not having a better season. At 27 points per game, he's ranked uh, seventh in the league. Six assists, 6.5 assists, that's ranked 14th in the league. Jalen Brunson has been incredible. While I do think Nikola Jokic will win the MVP, Jalen Brunson deserves to be in the all NBA conversation and uh, I think he's going to get there he's having a tremendous year and really carrying this Knicks team who's been beset by injuries especially with Julius Randle but Jalen Brunson has been carrying this team and right now they are locked into the fourth seed in the NBA all right you mentioned the injuries there the Knicks got back OG Ananobi last week three and zero since his return and 15 and two overall with him in the lineup so are you surprised with how seamlessly he's jumped back in back in after missing so much time not at all, because that's the type of player he is in that 3 and D archetype. Just a guy that you can slot in right in. And when he when he made his debut again at, uh, at MSG, he was uh, pretty efficient from three. Defensively, he allows the Knicks to set in their rotations and, and really lock in. He, he helps the Knicks generate turnovers on the other end, which creates easy offense for them. His help defense, his rotations, I mean, he is just a prototypical wing defender that Tom Thibodeau needs in his defensive schemes. And Obi Ananobi has delivered now the elbow injury has been a little bit of a concern the last two games he's really been laboring and holding on to that elbow so the hope is there for the Knicks is that he can overcome that and it's just and it, it indeed is routine soreness all right you mentioned that defense a little bit there this team looks like they're bringing back that 90s day giving up less than 100 points in their last five games four and one over that stretch so other than Ananobi, because obviously you mentioned him what is working when it comes to the defensive side of the ball for these Knicks it has to start with their individual defense. We mentioned that in Obi, Josh Hart, Isaiah Hartenstein holding DeMontis opponents to zero points in the fourth quarter in the Knicks win over the Kings on Saturday night. Uh, Deuce McBride off the bench. Individual effort has been outstanding for this team, but as a collective, as a team defense, the way that they navigate over screens, the way that they communicate, their help side defense has been so on point for this team, and that is certainly what's carrying them. Also, their ability to rebound and protect the rim. Isaiah Hartenstein and Preston Tachua certainly doing their job. So it's been a collective effort, and all these Knicks have been buying into Tom Thibodeau's scheme so far, and they're looking uh, really well, really good. And, and one more thing on that note, Joe, uh, free throw attempts overall in the NBA are down, and so it seems like the NBA is making a concerted effort to add more defense into this picture, and that only bodes well for this Knicks team who plays a very physical brand of defense. So that, that's a good thing for the Knicks. Definitely something to keep an eye on down the stretch here. All right, they have two tough ones to end the road trip, the Warriors and then a date with the champs in Denver. After that, the schedule lightens up a bit. So 15 games left to play. What seed do you think the Knicks end up with when it's all said and done? Joe, I like their chances in the fourth seed, but do not sleep on the three seed. Mm. The Knicks are two games in back of the Cleveland Cavaliers, a team in which they have really owned over the last two years. And on top of that, the Cleveland Cavaliers have a little bit of injury issue. Donovan Mitchell, who is nursing a sore uh, bone bruise in his knee, made his return to Cleveland, but had a little, little, bit, little bit of a setback and is going to miss a little bit more time. And so in two games back of, of Cleveland, the Knicks could potentially capture the three seed. So I like their chances at, at either spot. You forget that other teams have to deal with injuries too, CP. Right. The Knicks may be getting through their stretch right now. Uh, hopefully we'll be talking about that three seed and the playoffs in just a couple weeks here. Thanks so much for the time tonight. Appreciate you, sir. Hope so, Joe. Have a great week.